students who are flying the flag at half mast right now. This is in memory of the 19 fallen firefighters that, that were uh, that died in the fires out in Arizona. Uh, Governor Pat Quinn uh, wrote a proclamation, and I'd like to read this, and then we'll have a moment of silence in, in memory of those fallen firefighters. Let's see if my voice holds up here. Whereas we hold the highest esteem and reverence for the men and women who answered the call to serve their friends, family, and community, and whereas the first responders save countless lives every year with their heroic efforts, and whereas firefighters not only demonstrate their desire to serve, but have the courage to act calmly and professionally in otherwise terrifying situations, and whereas on the evening of June 30th, 2013, the following fire, 19 firefighters were suddenly taken from us while battling a wildfire in central Arizona. Eric Marsh, Andrew Ashcroft, Robert Caldwell, Travis Carter, Dustin DeForest, Christopher McKenzie, Grant McGee, Sean Meisner, Scott Norris, Wade Parker, John Pearson, Anthony Rose, Jesse Steed, John Thurston, Travis uh, Turbifo, William Warnicke, Clayton uh, Whited, Whited probably, Kevin uh, Wojcik, and Garrett Zeppinger. And whereas one of these firefighters, Anthony Rose, had roots in Lake County, Illinois, ladies and gentlemen, where he attended Zion Benton Township High School and was a valuable member of their community. And whereas we will always remember that throughout their accomplished careers as firefighters, these individuals courageously volunteered to walk into fires as everybody else ran out. And whereas, although they are no longer with us, we will not forget their countless lives that were impacted by their public service. And whereas, these individuals are not simply public servants, but dedicated first responders who were known by many, by many for their deep commitment to helping people and saving lives. Whereas we remember these individuals' dedication to their community and to protecting their fellow human beings, and whereas each of the brave firefighters who were tragically taken from us leave behind many living, loving friends and family members. Therefore, I, Pat Quinn, Governor of the State of Illinois, do by here order that all persons and entities of the government of Illinois fly their flags at half-mast until Monday afternoon. That's why we're flying at half-mast. So I'd like to take a moment, if everybody would have a moment of silence, to remember our fallen firefighters and the courageous men and women that serve all of our communities every day of the week, 365 days a year, serving our needs on a local level. So let's take a moment of silence to remember those folks, please. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to invite uh, two gentlemen to the stage here. Uh, we've got one other quick uh, thing to do here. I'd like to invite our mayor, Mr. Dan Elsasser, and uh, Mr. Paul Dempsey to the stage. This is our new mayor, Dan Elsasser. Everybody greet him. Welcome to the Morris. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, I just wanted to say a few words here before we get to Paul and the rest of the recognitions. I know there was a lot of controversy about uh, what we've done up here on campus, the cement. Um, now that it's in place, you can see it, the bench, benches are mounted. I think most of us would agree it, it's a great improvement up here. Um, I cannot take credit for this. Uh, past Mayor Unger was spearheaded this project, so to see him give him some thanks on it. I'm overwhelmed by the crowds that we're having on Wednesday and Friday nights. It's uh, just great. Um, that's about all I have to say on this, I guess. I'm going to let Gary uh, introduce Paul, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. 
We thought it appropriate this evening because many people were involved in the uh, planning and implementation of this area here. And like Dan says, it was controversial, but you know, there's always going to be controversy in these kind of projects. This band shell is over 90 years old. It's the third band shell that we've had in Mount Morris. The first one was a little octagon shaped band shell that actually was in two different places, sat here down the street and then closer to where we're at now. It was replaced in the real early 1900s with a square um, band shell that sat over here, approximately where the Pepsi booth is. And that actually, that structure is still in Mount Morris. It's serving as a house right now up in North Seminary. Up until just a few years ago, you could still recognize, if you looked at the pictures of, the, of that structure, you could still recognize features of it uh, as the band shell. It was very obvious. A few years ago, it was sighted and no longer uh, looks, like, looks like it. So this was the third structure that we've had in Mount Morris. Uh, change is always going to happen. A few years ago, uh, Mayor Unger had the idea that we need to make some improvements out here in front of the band shell. We've got a beautiful town, we've got a beautiful campus area here. And uh, we need to put a polish on it. We've, we've been starting that. And uh, so he had the vision to put down some concrete, make it safer for a lot of people to be able to, to uh, navigate on and put down permanent park benches. Park benches were getting strewn all over the campus. They'd get piled up at various times, and they had to move them a couple times uh, every time they mowed, and it was a lot of work. Those benches were heavy. So he had the vision to do exactly what we did here, and uh, uh, we laid plans and, and uh, went forth. So at this time, I'd like to uh, remind everybody who all was involved in this, and we've got members of the committees uh, uh, here tonight, so I'd ask that, that they stand up as uh, the groups are recognized here. Uh, I think Mayor Unger, retired Mayor Unger, is here someplace. Uh, I don't see him, but he said he was going to be here. He's in the pickup truck. Cross okay, there he is. Okay. Let's give Greg a big hand for all of his hard work and service he did for Mount Morris. Great years as mayor, and also as a board member for, uh, I think it was close to 22 years, if I remember right. Uh, we had a lot of local residents uh, that, that had a part of this up here. The village council, all of our village council members, and some of those are here tonight, uh, they, they would stand up. The planning commission held a couple of, of public uh, informational meetings. We've got some of those folks here tonight. The tourism group that we formed here a couple of years ago, uh, they had some input into this. The economic development group, which is active here in town and, and trying to revitalize Mount Morris, had uh, input on it. And then we also had a, a bunch of volunteers that helped assemble the benches on a weekend. And on Monday morning, we came up and, and uh, laid them out and bolted them down. So we had a lot of, lot of good input. A lot of people put a lot of time into this project. Um, we're going to dedicate this new area. It's, it's very fitting because Harry and Harvey Cable, who started the plant down here many, many years ago, most of you are familiar with them, uh, we're very, very musically minded. This has been known as the Cable Concert Band for many, many years. And so we're going to dedicate this new area to Harry and Harvey Cable this evening. Making this possible uh, took a lot of money, okay? Uh, we've got, right now where we're at, we've got $30,000 invested to do what we've done. We've got a few more things we'd like to do. We've got to raise some more money. But uh, our friends over at Exxon and Mr. Paul Dempsey was largely responsible for working with us to get this money. Exxon uh, did matching funds of $15,000 for us here in Mount Morris to improve Mount Morris for your convenience and use. So I want to say a big thank you to, to Paul for all of the input and everything that Paul did for us. So with that, it's good to see everybody, glad to have you here, and I'm going to turn it back over to the band now. Tonight's program will include a variety of music, all with an American flavor, so of course we must begin with the John Philip Sousa March. We'll begin with Liberty Bell. This march was composed by Sousa in 1893. 
published in a variety of genres as a piano solo, a piano duet, published for orchestra, band, banjo, guitar, mandolin, and zither. This piece came about after Sousa's manager saw a huge picture of the Liberty Bell during a show in Chicago, and so this inspired the march. Sousa was an extreme patriot and was sometimes called the Pied Piper of patriot patriotism. As a first march published on a royalty basis, it netted Sousa $40,000 in the first seven years of its publication. Later in life, Sousa told of spending $15 million on band transportation and $13 million on salaries. The Liberty Bell by John Philip Sousa. <laughs> 